With the recent update for DST introducing the Crab King boss, I felt like it would be interesting to look back at all the bosses in the game and the single player DLCs and give you my 5 favourite and 5 least favourite bosses. Today we're going to start with the worst ones. And looking at all the iterations of Don't Starve, there are a total of 20 bosses to choose from, not including the Reign of Giants bosses that are improved upon in DST. I've also left out the Crab King because both the fight and the loot are subject to change, as well as Tree Guards and Spider Queen, which may have been considered bosses in the past but don't really fit the definition anymore. So, starting us off at number 5, I've got Pugalisk. And I would have put it higher up on my list, but I think the creature itself and the way in which you summon it is pretty unique, and you gotta give credit when credit's due. The fight itself feels like a game of cat and mouse. You avoid the head and tail while hitting the weakened part of the body. This in itself is not very difficult, and the freezing rays just break up the fight for a bit while you dodge and then resume when it stops. But the main reason I have this boss so high up on my list is the very mediocre loot that you get. The bulk of the loot you receive is monster meat, snake bones and bone shards, which is great if you want to make snake bone soup and pretty useless otherwise. The Pugilis skull is another item recovered from the petrifying bones following the fight and used for the sole purpose of crafting the Pugilisk wand. This one lets you freeze targets instantly but lasts only 4 minutes or half of one in-game day before rotting, making it a very forgettable item that had honestly limited applications in the first place. The only reason to go anywhere near the Pugalisk is to collect the magic water from the Fountain of Youth and luckily you can just grab it and piss off. Next on my list is another Hamlet boss, the Ancient Herald otherwise known as that thing that comes after you when you forget about the apocalypse again. Now, I hate having to put this boss on the list because the mechanics are quite cool. It really is an apocalyptic scenario. You have frogs raining from the sky, nightmare creatures chasing you, meteors threatening to flatten you if you take a wrong turn, all set to one of the best tracks in the game. Yet the loot is garbage. And I think you'll find that's a major theme among the bosses in this list. It's just not worth your time to fight this boss. The only significant items dropped are the Dark Tatters and the Vortex Cloak Blueprint. Now what is the Vortex Cloak, I hear you ask? Well, it's essentially knight armor that absorbs 100% of damage instead of 95%. However, it has a durability of 450 HP instead of the knight armor's 750. And 30% of the damage you take come straight out of your sanity, compared to Knight Armor's 10%. Where the cloak is meant to shine is in its ability to be refueled with Nightmare Fuel, and it's doubling as a backpack. One Nightmare Fuel refuels 5%, or 22.5 HP on the Vortex Cloak, so you're going to need 20 Nightmare Fuel to recharge it from zero. And as for the backpack function, it only has 8 slots, making it equivalent to the standard backpack and far worse than both the piggyback and the Krampus sack. In fact, the Vortex Cloak actively stops you from wearing better backpacks because you can't carry it with you. It's a backpack after all, you have to either wear it or leave it. So in short, the cloak sucks and the Ancient Herald will continue to be a boss fight I avoid. Coming in at number 3 on my list of the worst bosses is none other than Antlion. Everybody's favourite reminder that yes, it is in fact summer once again. There are not too many things I dislike about a new rain, but Antlion is definitely one of them. The first summer in any world automatically becomes a chore because you not only need to kill Antlion, but you first need to find the blueprint for the desert goggles and the fashion goggles before that. I swear, the only reason fashion goggles even exist is to add an extra step to crafting desert goggles. I've never seen anyone running around rocking fashion goggles. And the only real way of getting these blueprints is with everybody's favourite pastime, fishing. Which, depending on your luck, can literally take days of your time. 
Meanwhile, every four or five days, antlion creates sinkholes on the surface or boulders in the caves, and sinkholes in particular completely destroy the aesthetic of any base if you don't manage to get away in time and take 30 days to disappear. 30 days! You can of course feed antlion rocks or other items to appease it for a period of time, but you'll have to come back at least three times over the course of the summer to feed it more if you choose to go about it this way. And combined with the fact that it respawns every single summer, Antlion very quickly becomes possibly the most annoying boss in the game. The only reason it's not number one on this list is because the Lazy Deserter, the blueprint of which you get as a drop, is very cool and quite useful. You can also make glass spikes and glass castles, which is a nice touch, I gotta admit. Now, I found it very hard to put this next boss in at number two, when every part of my being wanted to send it straight to number one. I am, of course, speaking of the Moose Goose. In fact, the only reason I didn't put it higher is because down feathers are used to make weather panes, which are very useful. On paper, the fight is very straightforward. Three hits, dodge, three hits, dodge, three hits, honk and pick up your weapons and so on and so forth. However, Moosey over here does not like to stick to this plan at all. She hits when she should honk, she honks when she should hit, she moves away when you try to attack and even flies away for no reason whatsoever, only to reappear seconds later with full health. This definitely gets my award for the jankiest fight in all of Don't Starve. And we haven't even spoken about the Mosslings yet. These bastards go around eating every little piece of food they can get their hands on. Yes, they can be used to overcharge WX, but the lightning they create is sporadic at best, and doesn't even hold a candle to Wicker using the End is Nigh book. So, sorry Moosey, but you suck. And that brings us at last to what is, in my opinion, the worst boss in Don't Starve, the Malbatross. I think fighting any boss in DST over the water was always going to be more annoying than on land, but this boss is annoying in and of itself. And it drops terrible loot. The Malbatross bill is a slightly better ore, and the winged sail, sure, is much better than a regular sail, but ultimately neither of these items will see much use, and neither are by any means required for anything. Reaching the Lunar Islands or Pearl's Island can be done with any regular sail, and often boat bridges are made so that sails are not required at all. I won't speak too much about the actual fight because I think it's largely okay. There are a few different phases, and if you know what you're doing, the annoying parts can be largely skipped, and the fight will be over quite quickly since Malbatross only has 5000 HP, which by the way is less than both Antlion and Moose Goose. If you do for whatever reason want to fight this boss, then you first have to actually find it. The boss spawns at a quarter of these shoals around the world at any given time, and if you don't get lucky, well, you can always sail around the world to the other ones or wait three days for another one in four chance of it spawning. Cause that's fun, right? It's like the beast itself realizes that it's pointless, so it just takes itself out of the way for you. <laughs> but anyway, those are in my opinion the worst five bosses in the game right now. Do you agree with my assessment? Let me know what yours are in the comments. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care.